We will turn to our reading to the Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter, verses 24 to 37. And it reads, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch as it, as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Please pray with, pray with me. Oh God, help us to keep awake during this sermon. That we may be aware that hope has come. Help us to keep awake so that we may draw nearer to you. And watch out in the ways we can be your extension of hope to the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this is technically the first day of the church, liturgical church calendar. Remember last Sunday I said that with Christ the King Sunday, we celebrated the end of the liturgical year. So Happy New Year. Happy New Church Calendar Year. I know it doesn't necessarily make a big deal out of this new beginning of the church calendar. Whenever we think of the first Sunday of Advent, we don't really associate it We jump right through and go straight to Christmas, right? But the first Sunday of Advent is important, for we celebrate the candle of hope. Joe, earlier, went ahead and uh, lit the candle, the first candle, which represents hope. And speaking of the calendar, have you received one of these things? Yes? Okay. We are truly blessed that we have talented and caring people at the conference office. They provided this to every church in CalPAC. And uh, they spend time and in prayer in uh, putting this together. And I love it. Um, it, uh, it, um, it goes through each week, hope. This is week one, hope, peace, uh, joy, and love. And it has different exercises that you can um, 
partake as a practice uh, for preparation for Christmas. You can do it alone, you can do it with a couple, you can do it with family and friends, with whomever. So I encourage you to take one of these and put it in your refrigerator um, so that you can see it and uh, practice it each and every day. For you see, as I read the text today, we look at the text today and we hear the uh, designation of the first Sunday of Advent. And I don't know about you, it doesn't sound like New Year celebration, does it? It just does not sound like festivity. Far from it. We don't really see anything related to hope either. Instead, we hear words of suffering, the sun being darkened, and the moon losing its brightness, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and mind you, they don't sound like pretty falling stars, but the kind that will have the heavens shaking and the earth shattering. And within the cloud, the Son of Man will come. In other words, Jesus will come and all and his glory and his power. And, uh, and we don't really, it's, it's hard to picture all that as a celebration. For you know, Jesus is coming. When Jesus comes, he will be judging. <laughs> so I don't know where the celebration is. So I need to admit that Mark's introduction for the church New Year and the first Sunday of Advent has not been my favorite for a long time. I, I kind of look back to the sermons that I've done for first Sundays in Advent last 22 years, and about 75% of those times I realized that I will preach from Isaiah's version of Advent, but not from Mark. Changed my mind this year. Even though Mark does not begin with the baby and the first coming of the Messiah to Jerusalem, it does emphasize how appropriate it is that Mark begins this text of Advent with the problems that we are surrounded with every day. We normally associate the passage with chaos and fear and trepidation. But in general, the intent of apocalyptic literature, especially from this passage, is not so much about making preparation for rapture or the ends of time or stocking water and food and getting ready for the end of it all but to ensure that our lives are lived with hope, especially for all of us, all of us in the world who are living in dark times, so that we may focus our expectations on the revelation of God in the here and now. Unfortunately, it seems that ever since the first coming of Jesus as a baby, some Christians have spent more time focused on the future appearing of the Lord. Many have made wrongful the predictions, which at times have led, led to catastrophic endings of lives. Predictions abounded from the very beginning, such such date, as such, such hour, the end will come, and Jesus will appear on such, such land. I was dumbfounded with the many websites dedicated to pinpointing the date when Jesus will return. And they all are different. <laughs> they don't even share a commonality here. They all claim different dates. The trouble with all the wasted energy spent on wrongful predictions and the focus on the future coming of Jesus takes away the importance of living our lives in the promise of Emmanuel, God who is with us now 
here, today. It takes away from the joy of knowing that in Jesus we have the hope of bringing the kingdom of God here on earth. Now, it takes away from the awareness that yes, as we look towards the ultimate culmination of the peaceful, loving, and perfect world with Jesus' return, we are to stay awake and alert to bringing hope to the world as we can in the name of Jesus, here and now. We are to be aware that we can still make a difference in the lives of others with our prayers and words of assurance. Have you noticed that in every Sunday when we have our prayer of confession, what does it follow? Words of assurance, because it is an assurance that we have forgiveness in Jesus. Here we are living in a present day Advent. I know I told the children that Advent means the coming, you know, something that's going to be coming up. But that's the paradox. As Christians, we live in a present day Advent where each day is a chance to reflect the love of God to others and an opportunity to draw closer to Jesus. This is the Advent truth, my friends, that even in the midst of calamities, evil, and death, we have hope in the one who holds our future and live in the promise today. And we see this very hope in our text. Just one sentence, just one sentence in between the mentions of the suffering and death and destruction and earth-shattering calamities and the admonition to stay alert and be awake, for we do not know when Jesus' return will take place, we find, we find this one sentence. And he says, from the fig tree, learn this lesson. As soon as this branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know the summer is near. That one sentence of hope. It is interesting to know that whenever there is a mention of fig plants in Mark, it had to do with judgment. It had to do with tearing down the tree because it wasn't fruitful. It refers to its unfruitfulness as a symbol of the sin of Israel. But this is different this time. In Mark, there is a sprouting of hope. This is the truth of Advent, a time for hope, a time for telling ourselves the truth of our own anxieties and weariness and that life, da, 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 da. It is time to reflect on the endless and relentless fighting and hatred that goes on in this world and acknowledge that. But you know what's even better? It is a time to reflect on the endless and relentless love of God to all of the world. It is time to realize that God has been trying to reach out into our human hearts, minds, and bodies, and souls from the very beginning of time when Adam and Eve screwed up. God has been trying to reach into us Ever since then, when sin entered into our world, this is the Advent truth that God loves us so much that he did just that, send Jesus as a way of reaching out to all of us to show us his love. It is time to sing to ourselves and the children, how Jesus loves us, and that whenever we are weak, 
Jesus is strong. You adults, when was the last time you sang that song to yourself? I did it this morning, and it felt great. This promise of the sprouting hope that shatters all false hopes of misguided dates of Jesus' return and the feeble act of just waiting around for the world to change or to end, <laughs> either one. Yes, Jesus will come. Indeed, he will come. No doubt about it. That is the future advent. However, today, here and now, we live out our present advent and our church's mission to follow Jesus by... Love, grow, and serve. We live this great paradox, my friends. The already that happened in Jesus' first coming. That's already happened, right? But then we also live it in the now. Little children are so perfect. They know that Christmas happens once, and that is so true. There will never be a replicate of the first coming of baby Jesus because he is the Savior and the Messiah, the only true God. But we ourselves live out our Christmases each and every day, now and here, by doing what is just, loving our neighbors, and sharing in our compassion. Be alert. Look for opportunities to be the hope to the hopeless. Be attentive to the Spirit of God guiding you to bring the Advent truth to our homes, communities where we live and work. Pray every day about how you can be the hope for others and trust that God will use you to do just that hope fully. Mark admonishes us to not be like the workers who slack off while their master is away, but keep awake at your work, anticipating that the master may return at any minute. So let us begin our Advent journey by bringing the truth, which is the hope in Jesus the Christ. From Reverend Courtney Allen Crump, I found this amazing reading from Allen Bosacks, and it's, an, it's called Advent Credo. And it reads It is not true that creation and the human family are doomed to destruction and loss. This is true. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It is not true that we must accept inhumanity and discrimination, hunger and poverty, death and destruction. This is true. I have come that they may have life and life abundant. It is not true that violence and hatred shall have the last war, word and that war and destruction rule forever. This is true. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. It is not true that we are simply victims of the powers of evil who seek to rule the world. This is true. To me is given authority in heaven and on earth, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. It is not true that we have to wait for those who are specially gifted, who are the prophets of the 
church before we can be peacemakers. This is true. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall have dreams. It is not true that our hopes for liberation of humankind, of justice, of human dignity, of peace, are not meant for this earth or for this history. This is true. The hour has come, and it is now that the true worshipers shall worship God in spirit and in truth. Granted that our lesson from Mark does not begin with a baby in a stable as described in Luke. It doesn't begin with a long genealogy as listed in Matthew. He doesn't begin with the poetic presence of God and Jesus as illustrated in John. But it does resonate with the present day when we need to see the light of Jesus bringing home to a darkened world of sin, injustice, disease, and death. The Advent truth is that hope is here. Never lose that hope. We have been waiting for a long time for what has already happened in the birth of Jesus the Christ. That is our hope, to relive that coming promise each and every day. That is our Advent truth. So let us get ready to live in the hope of God who is with us, looking forward to a world of peace, joy, and love. Amen?